Friday night. It's Friday night. Oh, wait a second. Come on, Facebook. There we go. Facebook is live. YouTube is live. Periscope is live. And I'm Steve Economides, and that's Annette behind the scenes. Your head is being cut off. Well, on that the... always happens. Can you adjust that, maybe? No, don't adjust that. Adjust the tripod. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. That works. Okay. Okay, so Steve and Annette Economides from MoneySmartFamily.com. We've got a little late start because we're adding a third type of broadcast yes. to our show today, and that is on Periscope. That's the people over here on this camera. Hi! And this over here is YouTube people and Facebook people, and we're glad to be with you. Yes. And if you can hear us um, and see us, just let us know that the quality is coming in okay because we're, yes. we're trying some new stuff today. And... Um, Tonight's show is going to be awesome. We're going to be talking about homemade fudgy brownies. From scratch. From scratch. I'm going to show you how I do that. And no, this is not healthy. So, you know, no comments about how we're going to die next month because we're eating poison. This is a very once in a while thing for Stephen and Annette Economides at MoneySmartFamily.com. A very once in a while thing. I think... We probably make these brownies three times a year, maybe. So we're not going to die next week. They are not healthy in any way, but they are delicious. Absolutely delicious. So if you want a brownie recipe that kicks it out of the ballpark and will <laughs> hit it out of the ballpark and will um, just pass, exceed any kind of a box brownie mix, this is it. And so tonight we're going to give it to you. And we're going to give it to you. All we're right. also going to talk about a couple of freezer tips and tricks tonight. And um, yes, this is this here is one of my favorite cookbooks. It's called The Good Housekeeping Illustrated Cookbook. And Steve is going to put a, a link up there for that. Um, and it has a picture for every recipe. That's why I like it so much. And my mama gave it to me as I was getting married. And so it's really special. She wrote inside of it. And, oh, she wrote, To my Annette, use this cookbook and cook with love and joy in your heart. With this one, you can't miss. I love you, Mom. Mm. And um, I just got choked up. Anyway, I use lots of recipes from this cookbook. My split pea soup comes from here. Um, my um, homemade dinner rolls comes from here. The brownie mix comes from here. Um, the Italian sausage spinach pie comes from here. I, I, I can't even begin to name oh, wait all a the... Hold on. What? What? <laughs> I forgot to turn the picture on. Oh, no. There you are. There you are. Okay, so do I need to start over? No, they, they heard everything. They just couldn't see anything. So, oh, show, show so cookbook. here's my favorite cookbook, The Good Housekeeping Illustrated Cookbook. And um, this is Annette from MoneySmartFamily.com. And tonight we're making that delicious, um, the best ever fudgy brownie recipe. And so I'm going to talk you through it um, bit by bit. And as a matter of fact, this one calls for a cup of butter or margarine and four squares of unsweetened chocolate. Well, I didn't want to have unsweetened chocolate in my house, um, the bars, because they're kind of pricey. So I modified the recipe to have cocoa powder. So instead of the four squares of unsweetened chocolate, I am going to put in 12 tablespoons of cocoa <clears throat> and six tablespoons of margarine. So I'm going to lay the cookbook over here. And I'm going to get things going. This is basically made on the stove top. So, um, it, and then of course it goes into the oven, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with a cup of, uh, it calls for a cup of butter margarine. I'm gonna use one stick of margarine, which is actually, I do have a favorite here. Imperial is my favorite. So Imperial is going in. And then what I'm going to do is use a stick of butter as well. Chime in, let us know where you are around the globe. Um, 
and what the weather is by you. We, it's finally gotten cold here in Phoenix. And when I say cold, it means that the daytime temperature was in the 50s or 60s. And so for us, we're all freezing our ever living butts off because we're not used to that weather. And um, we're actually pulling out jackets and coats. And um, had to find those first. Yes, it's sort of crazy, but um, but really great. So chime in, tell me where you're from, say hi. Um, if you can share tonight's episode, that would be awesome. I am cooking these fudgy brownies and I'm melting the butter right now. <laughs> So I just want you to know that Eleni and Zoe are eating brownies right now. Oh, this. how fun. Okay. So, so here you, we you go. You might want to say something to them. Hello, nieces. How are you over in the cold country, right? We, we were just there. Actually, the Georgia is maybe not that cold this time of year. I don't know. Okay. So one, two, three, four five six okay that those are my six <clears throat> tablespoons of butter that i'm substituting for the hot cocoa and let me get a spoon can y'all see me i know i'm running around here but i've got to melt the butter first so i'm doing that while that's melting i'm going to grease my pan you think it's cold here yeah I know. We're, okay, chime in. Fill me in. What's going on? 11 are... degrees in the Badlands of North Dakota. Woo! Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. 40 degrees, Andrea says in uh, in New York. Okay. And Oregon is snowing. Oh, wow. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's cold in different places. We, uh, we have a friend, he's staying here from Germany. Yes. He thinks it's cold here, so he's got the heat running. <laughs> <laughs> he says it's normally um warmer here and yeah we have like winter we were waiting for winter to get here we like it normally starts in december and january no our winter has started the middle of february this year mandy says it's cold and rainy in southwest missouri Ooh. uh denise says northern california it's cold Okay. Um, Indiana, Ashley says it's 55 degrees in Indiana. Wow. Actually, that's kind of warm for you it guys, is. isn't it? Central Illinois is cold and rainy. Okay. Ashley says it's 48 degrees here, wherever here is. Okay. Um, uh, Ohio, a town ready for possible flooding. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry about that. Uh, Brenda says it's been 60s here in Ohio with lots of rain. Unfortunately, the Ohio River is near flood stage. Oh, oh I'm so oh, sorry. Boy. Oh, okay, that's, that's crazy. Okay, so where are we with we are We are melting the butter. I don't know. You can't. Maybe I could just take it off and show you. It's I'm, I'm going to come over to you as far as I can. All right. Let me, which let isn't me, very far. Let me just pull fast. it off. See here? Here it is. It takes a while to melt that butter. So I'm just melting the butter, getting it all melted. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the cocoa powder <clears> because <throat> I'm not using the squares so it's going to be 12 tablespoons of cocoa powder now don't One, interrupt her while she counts two <coughs> count with me three, three four four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12. And the other part about the expense, it's it's not only just the expense, it's that whenever I felt like whipping up brownies, I have to remember to have that unsweetened squares in the house. And it seemed like I always had cocoa powder in the house. So one day I just looked it up and said, you know, can I substitute uh, the cocoa powder? Some form of cocoa powder instead of the squares. This way, I don't have to worry about like stocking squares in the house. So um, yes, indeed, I found out a way to substitute <clears throat> the, um, the, the unsweetened chocolate. And what they said was uh, for four squares, it was 12 tablespoons of cocoa and six tablespoons of margarine. I don't know how I came up with that, but I've been doing the recipe this way for years and it tastes really good. 
Okay. So let's take a let's take a pause for a second. All right. We do have someone watching from Australia, and that's wonderful. Okay. Um, I want to just ask you guys for a little help. We're trying Periscope. Now I don't know how many people are um, using Periscope. It's an app on your phone for watching videos and live and everything. We're giving it a try. So if any of you have that app, if you could go over there and give us some feedback as to how it's looking, that would be great. The other thing is that there have been recent algorithm changes and you know algorithms drive all social media and control it. And so we're asking for your help to um, not only respond to these videos and share like you guys do, you, you love your comments, but also to put on notifications uh, so that you know when we go live and ask your friends to do the same thing. So that way we can get more community and responses from you guys because we're gonna we're gonna be sharing some tips tonight that we hope will benefit you and we're gonna be sharing a section on our website that a lot of people find very useful Helpful. and we're gonna share some forms that we have that will help you save money. So we're gonna get to that at the end and at the end, we're going to give you a coupon code if you want to buy something on our website for a discount. But uh, the whole idea of the We also have a giveaway today, right? We're doing a giveaway? Well, for comments? Didn't we talk about oh that? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay, but we'll get to that near the end. Okay, so I've got the butter and the cocoa melted. <clears throat> so this recipe says that when you have the butter and the cocoa melted, you're supposed to turn off the heat. This is crazy. And then... After the heat is turned off, you're supposed to mix in the sugar. And I said it's not a healthy recipe at all, but it is beyond delicious. Anybody that has ever tasted these brownies, I've literally had to keep them from diving into the tray and eating the whole tray of brownies, okay? That's why I say best ever fungi Did brownies. You tell them that this is the sugar. Right. And, and there's, you use half as much flour as you do sugar. Right, so there's more sugar in this recipe than flour, so it's brutal. Okay, so here we go. Two cups <clears> of sugar, pre-measured, getting mixed into the brownies, the chocolate, and the butter right now. <clears throat> oh, oh, man. I, I can smell it already. It's oh, smelling gosh. super chocolatey. This is so... Oh, I wish you guys could smell num, this. Num, num. Really good. Okay. All right. All mixed in. Do you want me to show? Everybody wants to see this. So let me show you. Here it is. The sugar and the chocolate. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Make the camera down here. Can y'all see this? Sugar and the chocolate all mixed oh, in. Oh, breathe deep. The smell of chocolate. Oh, It smells gosh. like super rich hot cocoa. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> On a cold night. This and, is oh, man. Here, you want, really good. You just want to dive into it. Okay. Go slow, go slow. Tip it towards the light a little bit. There you go. That is chocolate goodness. Okay, so putting this back on the stove. So the sugar was next, <clears throat> and I'm supposed to let it cool. You can't go wrong with sugar and fat. I mean, you just can't. No, you can't. <clears throat> you absolutely positively can't. And now the eggs get added very, very slowly. Like I'm going to try to blop them in. Um, it says one at a time. We poured them out ahead of time. It's I've got four of them in a bowl. I can't I can't see. I've got four of them in a bowl, okay. so I'm gonna just blop them out. There's one. And they don't cook when they get in there. Uh, no, because you've cooled down the mixture, and that's why you're doing them one at a time. You're stirring them in really fast, so you gotta cool down that mixture, and that's why you're mixing one egg in at a time because you gotta get it stirred in fast. You don't want it to cook. Okay, here we go. Isn't this crazy? This is just a crazy recipe. Okay, here's the next one. And it's going and I'm stirring fast to get it mixed in so it doesn't get cooked. But of course the mixture is cooling down now too because the- Eggs are cold. Um, because <clears throat> the eggs are cold and it's off the heat and it's a gas, we have a gas range so, and it's winter time so it's cooling off pretty quick. Okay, here's the last egg going in. All right. Yum, yum. Oh gosh, I'm telling you, you guys, this is the best brownie recipe ever. I wish you could all come over and taste it. Okay, the mixture is really like thick and goopy because the eggs have made it now goopy. All right.
All right, so I want to show you what this looks like. I don't know that you can see it, but I'm going to show you. Okay, you ready? Do you want to come over here by the light or no, what? No, just tip it towards the light. There you go. They can't, oh, no, no. They can't really see it they, being Annette, goopy, though. Annette. Hold on. Let me get a better picture. Hang on. Well, you can do it if you would like to stay there. Go ahead all right, there. so here it is. See how kind of goopy it is? It's all mixed well, up. Pull the spoon out and show them how thick it is. Oh, gosh. Pour it off the spoon. It's amazing. Okay, so. You're not, you're not showing me off the spoon. Turn it sideways. There you go. So it's like a thick syrup. Yes. Okay, now it's going back on the stove where I'm going to mix it. Actually, I don't need to mix it on the stove, do I? I'm going to put it. Can we move to over here? Because it doesn't, would be need to be on, doesn't need to be on the stove anymore. Cookbook's over here, so I'm going to move that. Okay, so the next ingredients I did the butter, the chocolate, the eggs, the sugar, the eggs. Now it says to put in the flour, which is one cup of flour already pre measured. Okay, here we go. Okay, one cup of flour. Mixing in. And then we need the salt. Then it calls for half a teaspoon of salt. So I got my spoon measures. Here we go, half a teaspoon of salt. That's in. Then we have the vanilla. And it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla. And this is not usually how I buy my vanilla, but once again, <laughs> people give me food and this was from the home of a baker who passed away, uh, a friend's mother. And so she gave me a whole bunch of Wilton bottles of vanilla extract. So I am very blessed by my friends. So I have one teaspoon of vanilla and in it goes. The last thing I'm going to add, Steve, was kind enough to chop up the nuts. And basically, we took uh, a cup of walnuts. It says you could put two cups in. That would be a lot of walnuts. You have to really like walnuts. And um, so I chopped up one cup of nuts. We have people coming over tomorrow, by the way. Steve is going to be restringing his the patio lights and putting up LED lights on the patio. And I am going to be teaching a few ladies how to make five dinners in one day. So maybe we'll chime in tomorrow with some live. I don't know. But um, why did I? Oh, so I'm making these brownies to feed everybody tomorrow. So that'll be part of what gets fed to the crew. I'm going to be feeding them lunch and um, we'll have brownies for dessert. Okay, so here are the chopped nuts. We basically put them in a bag and used a mallet to smash all the nuts up in the bag. Now you don't need to use those nuts if you want to have those different kinds of brownies. Okay, I'm ready for the joke. Go ahead, tell them the joke. Well, by putting those nuts in there, you just made the male brownie. Yes, I did. That's a very bad joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in our house, we like male brownies, not female brownies. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll eat female brownies too. Because yeah, but you like chocolatey. Okay. All righty. So guess what, folks? They're all made. This is it. This the slop is the is done. And now we get to pour them, pour this mixture into the pan. Okay. Well, let's take a break for a second. All right. Take a break. Anybody um, have questions so far about that, making the there brownies? There are some questions. One of the questions was, "What's the name of that cookbook?" Okay, I will tell you, here it is. And I shared the link again, but... It's the Good Housekeeping Illustrated Cookbook. Now, this is the 1980 edition. But you know what? These can be found at thrift stores and used bookstores all the time. But we just but, shared the link on Amazon, and on Amazon they have the newer version and the older version. Right. The older version sells for about $4. The newer version sells anywhere from 16 to 
right. dollars down to like four dollars. Right, and if you buy it through our a used one through our Amazon link, we get a little bit of a commission. So and we appreciate every little yes, commission. Yes, we get. do appreciate okay. it when people use a few our other link. things. Um, okay, say hi to Tara. Oh, hi Tara. She doesn't like my jokes. <laughs> Tara, I'm an old man. These are old man <laughs> jokes. Get used to it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tara wants us to send her some. Look, these are for people who come to visit us. <laughs> yeah. The invitation is open, but that almost fell. <laughs> uh, so, Tara, uh, the invitation is open. So. Tara is coming, but you're not coming until the fall. But when you come, we are going to have so much fun. And yes, I will make the male brownies for you, Tara, if you like. Brownies, male brownies. Okay, I'm. Can you can you see? I'm gonna pour this. Can you see how I'm? I can see clearly. Okay, now. here we go. Into a greased pan. Why I don't know. There's so much butter in this recipe. I don't know why you need a greased pan. Okay, let's take a poll. All right. When you eat brownies. Yeah. There are two kinds of brownies. Yeah. There are middle brownies and edge brownies. Oh yes. So put your vote in. Right are now. you an edge brownie or a middle, middle brownie? brownie? And by the way, what we're going to do, we're going to tally up all the comments. And one person is going to get a free website membership right. worth $20. And you're going to find out why it's so valuable in a little bit when we talk yes, about Yes, we are going to talk about um, that. We talk about the forms that we have on our site. So go ahead and make sure you make comments on there. But tell us what kind of brownies you like do you like the edge or do you like the middle personally guess what i like the different kind that annette likes so guess which one steve is and guess guess which one i am and our kids are hilarious too because you you really brownies are serious eating and i know they make those pans have you seen those pans <laughs> but i don't like those pans i don't know why i think we had them for something i just like i like making just a regular pan of brownies and hopefully in your family, you have all different kinds of people that like edges versus mm. middles. Okay, let's see on YouTube. We've got, um, uh, let's see, I meant not, let's see, uh, da, 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 substitute rice. There's all kinds of comments here on YouTube. I love wow, it. I think good. one of those brownies would take up an entire month of my Weight Watchers points. Yes. It's totally worth it. No, uh, we did Weight Watchers, right. and one sixteenth of this recipe is four points yeah that's points plus so just know i speak that language actually uh, 1 16th 1 16th is four points it is pricey but 1 16th of that so if you cut right. them cut them four by four that's 16 so you cut them like three by whatever that way anyway okay so that's that's it um yeah you have to be sure you don't have nut allergies but if you're making right. them yourself you probably if you have nut allergies you probably okay won't here they are they're going in are you ready mm -hmm. They are going into the oven. Okay, so Cheryl says she likes the middle. Okay. Um, let's see. Jen says she likes the edge and the corner. Oh, she likes double edge. <laughs> double edge. She's my That's kind of girl. That's awesome. She's my kind of girl. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just gave a hint for what I like. Okay. And let's go back over here to YouTube or Facebook. And Facebook, what do we have? People coming in here. Um, uh, I'm looking, looking, looking. The, the feed is not always so, so clean. Do we yeah. have new comments on Facebook? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you have gotta be. I know my our Facebook okay. crowd is making some. Brenda comments. Riffle says I like the edge, but we'll eat any of them. <laughs> 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 okay. And Amanda says she thinks I like that. Steve likes the edge. Um, Ashley says they also like male brownies. <laughs> Krista says, uh, Krista, I just just jumped. Krista says the edge. Uh, Mandy says that I'm a middle guy. <laughs> no, but I am a middle child. Um, Krista says edge. Let's see. Tara is laughing out loud. Uh, Ashley says middle for my husband and kids. Okay. Tori says middle. Uh, Angel says middle brownies and female ones only. Okay. <laughs> uh, Karen says middle. Uh, oh gosh, there's just laughing. I never thought about all the fun you could have uh, with brownies. Tara says, no, there are three kids in the entire pan of brownies is what she would eat. <laughs> uh, yeah. there, yes. are, there are days, you Especially know? these. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. If you want to torture your kids when they're over, make brownies and have them be baking in the oven. Okay. Tara says so, she'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, as you probably have guessed by now, do, can you see comments on Periscope at all? We haven't got anything on Periscope okay. right now. So uh, um, on, um, in our house, Annette is a middle person and mm. Steve is an edge person. Are you a corner person too? Oh yeah, I'll take corner. Okay, and then Becky is an edge Abby person. Abby is an edge person. Abby is an edge person. <laughs> Joe, Joe doesn't like nuts and right. probably likes middle. I bet he likes yeah. middle. John, I don't know what John likes. I don't know what John likes either. Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to hand this over to Steve and he's going to talk for a few minutes. We're going to talk gonna, about freezer tips. I'm going to man the cameras. Freezer tips. Just because we were trying to help people save money. And I know some of you saw when we did our reorganizing the freezer and that was a good show, but we just want to give you some tips to help you save a lot of money. I'm looking around because things got moved from when I brought them what? out. Oh, but one well, they're down here. here. One freezer tip. We use a chest freezer and we use a chest freezer because it's frost it's frosted it's not frost free we don't use frost free freezers because they tend to dry out the meat because in order for them to be frost free they have a fan that's constantly circulating and it will dry food out so that's number one we use a freezer that is not frost free and here we defrost it about once a year mm -hmm. second thing is we put all of our things segmented in bags so we use a paper bag inside of a canvas bag now you could just use a sturdy canvas bag and actually we are looking to have some canvas bags made with maybe our logo on it so you guys could have money smart canvas bags but that's a secret that only you know <laughs> so in in the blue bags we put meat in the no blue bags, blue bags are meat, meat. pink uh, bags are berries red um, green bags are veggies and then um, we just have a few other miscellaneous bags but that's how we code things so it's easier to find. And you can read about that in our grocery book, but, but how we stock the freezer. But you can freeze. Talk about the three things okay. that you can okay. freeze. So we just, um, the Sam's Club near us uh, closed down. I think they closed 65 of them across the country. And one of them near us closed down and we went there on a day when everything was 25% off. So we bought several gallons of milk and we froze it. Now, because we don't drink milk that often, we freeze it. There's three different ways or four different ways you can freeze it. If it comes in a cardboard container with you know a half gallon with the, the pop open top, you can freeze that without pouring anything off because there's expansion room already in there. We froze uh, this stuff in a glass container and we left the lid off so that the pressure wouldn't build and crack the jars. And that's happened before. And you leave a little room so it has expansion room. Now, we also have goat's milk in the freezer and when they get frozen they look similar so i put a rubber band on because stickers won't stick to glass when it's in the freezer so this is cow's milk um, we also freeze cheese and annette buys a lot of shredded cheese because we don't usually use slices of cheese on things but cheese will freeze incredibly fine especially shredded the um, chunk cheese will get crumbly and so you'll need to let it come to room temperature to re-gel Otherwise, when you slice it, it'll crumble. And we have a whole tip on that on our website in the, um, what page is that on? Okay, which one? Um, I'm, the I'm, cheese solution. It's in the dairy section. Yes. So if you go groceries, to Groceries, dairies. Grocery the money-saving tips, groceries. And then if you go to the groceries page, there's a whole bunch of sub-pages, right. and dairy is one of them. Now, this bread has been frozen, and we freeze it in double bags. But the real key to freezing bread, and this is one of the most popular pages on our website, is to cool it before you put it in the freezer. So it's a two-step process. If you don't, if you go from room temperature to a freezer where a freezer is zero degrees, the, the moisture in the bread will come out and create condensation on the, the plastic wrapper, and then it'll turn to frost. And then when you defrost the bread, it'll turn to water and the bread will get soggy. But if you cool the bread before you freeze it, very little condensation will come out of the bread and your bread won't get soggy when you defrost it. Plus, you take and put it in a bag to keep air from getting in, which prevents freezer burn. So we freeze things like English muffins and they don't get soggy. We freeze loaves of bread and we take them and put them in a plastic bag. We tie it closed and put it in the freezer. So those are three things we freeze with great regularity. We also freeze fruits and veggies um, 
gosh, lots of berries, um, turkeys. Turkeys don't have an expiration date when you buy the frozen ones, and they can stay in there for up to a year or two years. Right. So that's, that's a we, great way to We also them. have blogs on our website, moneysmartfamily.com. Did you say that we have a blog about freezing and thawing milk? No. We, we also have a blog about freezing bread. We have a blog about freezing bread. Right. And then the... We have a blog about how much a freezer can save you in yes, a year. Yes, yes. And I'll tell you this. Freezers are not that expensive, and they don't cost that much to run. An average freezer will probably cost you about $30 or $40 a year to run. Now, we have a 27 cubic foot, so ours is about $40 or $50. Right. But the savings you get by using a freezer just exceed yes. what that freezer will cost you in the cost of the freezer and in the cost of the electricity in the first year alone. So look at it as a tool that will actually make you money. Because right. it will. It will let you stock up on all kinds of things. Now, I, I don't know if we said this, because you're going to go into the membership right. forms at this point. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at each of our social media platforms. We're going to look at YouTube. We're going to look at Facebook. We're going to put everybody that has made a comment. So make a comment about whether you like the middles or the edges of brownies. Make a comment about the weather in your area, anything at or, all. Or whether you like a frost-free freezer or a non-frost freezer. Right. Any, There's any so comment any comment at all. Anybody that makes a comment uh, on each of those platforms, each platform alone, we're going to put all your names in a basket, and then we're going to draw somebody's name and give away a free web $20, membership. $20 web membership. Right. And now, here's the for, awesome thing about the web membership. everybody else... We're going to give you a coupon code. So right. You don't have to pay $20 if you want to get this. But we're going to show you one. The, the web archive is basically articles that we've written that we haven't published to the public on right. our website. And they are articles that came out of our books. Or we wrote before the books were written. And they're, they're in-depth articles on different areas of saving money. Plus, we have a lot of forms that accompany products that we sell. And we're going to show you a few of those tonight. So I'm going to step behind the computer and I'm going to show you the page on our website where the forms are. And I'm going to go through some of the forms. Like I just shared one this week with a young guy who's buying a house and he's dealing with the financing of the house. Well, we had wrote an article on what to check on when you're refinancing a house or when you're financing a house and what costs are negotiable. And we built a comparison sheet so you can put all the costs in and total it so you know what each lender is going to charge you in total not just uh, you know, the, the um, interest rate or the points. So I'm going right. to step behind the computer and I'm going to show you the screen. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you come over here and you can talk to him while I get that going. Okay, brownies are cooking. This is so awesome. And um, the, the nice thing about um, our member only section, one of the best things is not only the articles, but the forms. There are amazing forms from the vacation packing list to my 92 meal list that I cook for our family. Okay, here we go. I keep talking. Okay. I'm going to go to the forms. To um, how to hire a contractor and not get burned. That's in there. Um, budgeting forms are in there. Kids and money forms are in there. Can I read them mm -hmm. while you're while you're right. doing that? Well, we're going to show them a couple of them, but okay. the, the top one is our vacation packing list. Yes. And this one, we use this every time we go on vacation. Yes. And basically what we did is we created a form so that we wouldn't have to think about what we're packing. Right. Now okay. we call it we call it the train case. We don't really use that anymore because no. on planes you can't take things separately. That's our that's our toiletries. Right, toiletries. Right. Okay, suggested toy okay. list. Hold on. I'm I'm on the, the, the vacation packing list. But this okay. is just a great time saving idea. Right. You can use ours or you can make your own. Um, Toy list. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. talk about the toy list. Yeah, we've got a toy list by age for if you've got young children, it's amazing because uh, Burton White's book the first three years talked about how not every toy company um, qualifies their toys appropriately so he talked about flip books and how actually 18 month olds love flip books and it was true when Abby was little we would keep flip books on our headboard and she there was no stopping her from climbing out of the crib but at least we could tell her, when you climb out of the crib, come find mommy and daddy. Right. So, so we broke this up into toys for two to six-year-olds. And we right. got toys, board games, art, and miscellaneous. Right. And then we did the same thing with six to 12-year-olds. Toys, right. board games, art, and miscellaneous. 
and then 12 to 18 year olds. Same oh, thing. we did. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't, we didn't necessarily do babies. We did older kids right. starting at two. So that's a really good thing that's in our member only. Also, we have our stewardship sheets. If you want to create your own budget system, we have a budget system kit already put together, but the, it's the old thing, time versus money. If you don't have the time and you want somebody to do it for you, we've got that ready made. But if you've got the time, but not the money, you could put one together yourself. Huh? So I'm showing on the stewardship sheet. Okay. Now. So that's part of our, our um, America's Cheapest Family budget system. And it's also described in the book, America's Cheapest Family Gets You Right on the Money. Okay. I'm going to skip the next one. I don't know okay. if you know what the next one is because I want to come back to that. Okay, we have a refinancing. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a home mortgage and you're refinancing, we have a, a quote cost sheet for that. And I, I want to build an Excel right. version of this or a Google Sheets where it'll compare multiples. Right. Together. But this oh, is gosh, right now, this asks time. every question yes. that you need to ask. Right. It also asterisks which fees are negotiable. Yes. And oh, just boy. know that most of the fees that mortgage companies and lenders are going to charge you can be negotiated and right. save you thousands of right. dollars in the purchase amount. Okay, and then we also have a patient assistance list. So if you're helping somebody with medical bills or you need certain medications and you're wondering if there's patient assistance programs out there, we have a patient assistant list for a lot of the pharmaceutical companies or pharmacies mm -hmm. that can help you. Right. Okay, then also there is a once a month cooking, my once a month cooking list with um, uh, some sample menus. Um, and then this is crazy, but we did articles on birthday parties. And we <laughs> haven't posted those yet. They're in the member only section. And we have this wonderful bubble party that our friend Angie used to do for our kids when they were little. And so we have a homemade bubble juice recipe in our subscriber only. If you if you catch it right now, you can get it, but I'm gonna keep moving on. Okay, <laughs> now we also have um, a neighborhood bingo party mixer. There were several years when we did a Christmas cookie exchange with our neighbors and they came out of the woodwork for that. It was so much fun. Uh, we've not been able to do that in the last Oh my gosh, I want to say but, 10 years. But we do it with other events, like when we have missionaries over, they have a support party. Or right. Oh, sure. Friends. We do it for our, we've done it for our New Year's Eve party. Yeah, we have New a Year's special Year's Christmas party. one for our New Year's Eve party. And I believe that's in our New Year's Eve party blog. Yeah, it is. It's got the, the New Year's Eve bingo and it's mostly Christmas related, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. We, on our, <clears throat> on our household finance page, we have a, a mileage tracker sheet for tracking gas mileage. A lot of times when you track your mileage, every time you fill up your tank, you can tell if you're like, you need to put air in your tires or if there's some problem with your car because your mileage will be off. And that's a great way to, to, to know my, if something might be wrong. Right, but you won't know it if you don't track your mileage. Right. Honey, can you grab my drinking cup real quick? Um, gift budget worksheet. Um, in there, um, that is not, anywhere else it's only in our member only section um oh we've got it other places where it, they buy the budget um our america's cheapest family budget system it's included in that also okay i thought we took it out of there um debt repayment worksheet um if you if you're needing to get out of debt the debt repayment worksheet is in the member only section and that's available as a um as an Excel file when you buy our America's Cheapest Family budget system, but it's only a PDF and Word document. Yes, here. income outgo sheet. Oh, this is That's, cool. That is one of the nicest things to start your budget is, is really how are you, um, how are you doing the budget? What, what are you spending every month? It's got everything on it that you could possibly spend money on and it's got blank places to add what we haven't thought of. So it's a great starting point if you want to put together a, a budget. Uh, all the budget sheets, starter budget sheets, I believe ours is the most thorough. Yes. Now you don't have all of these categories when you do a budget. Right. We recommend not having more than like 21. 16 and 20 21. categories. But on this thing, there's we ask a lot of questions. Right. So you get your numbers close. And eventually if you, you budget long enough, you will get your numbers right out and you'll know exactly what it's going to cost. Right. In the member only section, we also have a mall scavenger hunt. That was another birthday party we did with one of our kids. So much fun. Basically, we asked about 10 friends of ours to come disguised. No, no, that's a different, that's a different one. Oh, that's a different one? Yeah, that was manhunt. 
Oh, that right. I forgot the manhunt. Okay, the mall scavenger hunt. We sent them to probably uh, 29 different stores. Where they could pick up something for free. No. They no? Had to, they had to get the price of different things. I'm looking at the sheet. Oh, right my now. gosh. So, I'm not even remembering. Yeah, go to the candy store and get the price of a smiley face sticker. Go to the camera shop and get a film canister. They don't have those anymore. This is an old thing. Oh, that. my gosh. <laughs> so it can be modified. And it took a little bit of legwork, like, like I want to say two weeks before we went to the mall and we talked to the different stores and asked them what we could do and put it together. So basically it'll have to be modified and updated, but that was another really fun birthday party for yeah. our kids. Yeah, we never did do the one about manhunt. We'll talk about that. Oh some other my time. gosh, manhunt's amazing. Okay. Then the scriber only section also has everything you need to start your kids and money system. Once again, we have the kit already made for you. You can buy the kit from it's us. $15, it's $17. It, right, $17, but you can also kind of put your own together except for the envelopes. So there is an envelope ledger sheet there and there is a time card there um, in the in the right. scriber only section. Would there be a chore chart back there too? No, the chore chart's only in our kit, sample chore chart. Okay, and then um, we also have, are you, are you zipping through all these? We also have my 92 meal list, which I've talked about. But and the value of this is when you're planning a menu. So Annette would go to the beef section right here and she'd say, well, I've got, I've got some ground beef. So what can I make with ground beef? Well, I can make hamburgers, hash. I can make a meatloaf. And it just makes it a lot easier to plan a menu if you have all of your recipes written out. So this would give you a good idea of how to set up yes. your mess recipes or yes. your, your menu lists. And um, a two-week menu planner. So that is a really, really, really fun tool. Um, remember, you can get autographed copies of our books from us. And we have deals. We have a two-book deal and a three-book deal because we have three books. And um, if you can use our Amazon link, if you purchase from Amazon and you can use our Amazon link, it helps defray costs for us for the website, for all the equipment for Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Okay, I'm going to bring you back. Here you go. There's Annette. Okay. So um, you have a link to our Amazon. I don't know what this link is for in our notes. Do you know what that link is for? Mm -hmm. If you purchase our book through Amazon or if you can, you can purchase our books on our website. Right. So let me, let me give that to you. So if you want to get an autographed copy of our Cut Your well, Grocery Bill. Well, don't you have a link to Amazon for the the uh yeah, the recipe that. book mm -hmm. so just look for the recipe book and that that's our link to amazon the cookbook the good housekeeping illustrated and um it's in it's in the show notes now remember if you leave a comment your name is going to go into a bowl and we're going to choose one winner to win um a free web membership but this is the deal we're going to announce it at the bottom of the comments so you need to make sure like we'll we'll tag whoever the winner is but you're responsible for um isn't that the best way to do yeah, it it's gonna be a problem with youtube comments we'll have to copy all the comments on youtube because these comments don't go live right so now we're gonna do what day are we going to draw the winner i think we ought to give them a few days because people are going to watch the replay too. true so sunday or tomorrow night or should we do it um let's let's do it sunday night sunday, sunday night. night by by midnight that's the last time you okay can we'll sunday the, night by midnight we'll post the winner yes on, on monday morning or something like that sometime on monday we'll do the drawing monday. okay so we'll have to do the drawing on monday we're just so, pulling this right out of yeah our... we are so just kind of make sure you check if you're a youtuber check back on youtube because we'll put it in there um on the comments and then if you're well probably for youtube what what will we do put it at the top of the first comment uh we'll put it somewhere I, I don't we'll know how put, we may it. have to put it a couple of different places on youtube on facebook we'll just put it at the bottom of the feed we'll make it a comment on the person's submission on youtube that way they'll get notified oh there you go and we'll do the same thing on facebook okay there you go he figured it out. Oh, he's so clever. Okay, so we have nine minutes left for the brownies. So if you want to hang on to see these brownies come out of the oven, see us eat them. then then I need you to uh, 
pepper me with questions and pepper Steve with questions. What questions do you have for us? Because we've got, we've made it through our whole, all of our show notes for tonight. So um, you went through the whole thing with uh, wheat bread versus white bread and all that stuff when you talked about bread, because I was answering mm -hmm. notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. I'm looking for questions here. Um, oh, wait. So we need, we need to tell them about what? the deal. The deal. Not, not everybody's going to win. Only That's really true. That's two true. people are going to win. That's true. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you a link now, and you got to watch for this. Uh, this link will expire on March 1st, 2018, I believe at midnight. So, so you this, have less than a week to redeem it. Right. So if you want to get the web membership now, mm -hmm. instead of $20, it would be $15. And you use this code and it's in the, in the comments on Facebook and it's now going into the comments on YouTube. But we'll make sure it's in the show notes on YouTube too for later on. But the code is lowercase save five. Save five. <laughs> save five. Save five on the Money Smart Family question and answer archive. And what we also do is if you get the archive, you not only get access to all the articles we have back there that are not available to the public that have been in our books, uh, you get the subscriber download forms, which there's almost 20 of them. Mm -hmm. And you get to ask us four personal finance questions in a year and we'll answer them. It may take us a few days to get back to you, but we'll right. answer your questions. Right. Okay, so do you guys have any other questions? Obviously, the brownies are pretty self-explanatory. The freezer stuff we've been over before, so you may be familiar with that. Okay, so here's what Daisy says. Okay. Uh, this is on YouTube. She says, for the milk, you have to open the container and pour some out of it, like drink a glass yes. of milk or use it somewhere else for yes. freezing so you won't have problems. Now, that's true. Right, if you freeze it by container. the gallon. Right. Yes, you but definitely have to tap it off. Cardboard half gallons. We've never had to do that on because there's enough expansion room in the way the cardboard is folded. I guess that's to true. Allow it. And with these, with the glass jars, I've actually broken several of them. So what I've done is I put them in the freezer, standing as straight up as possible, and do not screw the lid on all the way. Just screw it about halfway on so it lets air out for expansion while it freezes. And then I'm not breaking jars anymore. Yeah. Uh, somebody just mentioned that you can substitute rice flour or different things in brownies if you have uh, gluten, gluten allergies. Yeah. Almond flour. Oh, mm -hmm. that would taste really yeah. good. Ooh, yes. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, let me jump over to Facebook. Okay. And we'll see if there's any questions there. Other questions. Um, do you have tips on your site for buying a home outright? No financing. Oh, my. Well, um, the tip I would say there is make a wish list. When we were looking at this house to buy this house, we made a whole list of everything we were ever looking for in a house. And, um, and we got, I want to say, 95% of what we were looking for. As far as financing goes, if even if you don't have to take out a loan on a house and you're paying cash, mm -hmm. you still need to know there are still fees that you're going to have to pay. Title company fees, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So so our, our member only section, that one form for financing right. would still help you even if you're paying cash for a house because then you'll know what is negotiable. There's still going to be right. things you have to but pay. to buy a house cash. Right. Uh, number one, you got to have the cash saved. Don't ask right. Me, uh, but, right. And, and you're not going to buy as big a house. There's a real movement across the country for people buying tiny houses. We had some friends, uh, Curtis and Beth, who had a house in Spokane, mm -hmm. and they also own a, a large acreage with Christmas trees. No, not Christmas trees, but just trees on it. Yes, Christmas, Christmas tree lot. Well, and, it was and so they farm, took Christmas and they, tree farm. they built a shed that was a very nice shed. It was about five or six hundred square feet it was tiny but mm -hmm. as sheds go it was big as houses go it was small and that's where they would go live on the weekends when they were working their land they've since built a house and they since built a house right but they built small and then they sold their other house and built larger but if you have cash for a house and it's a, i mean say you have a large inheritance or something just make sure you're not paying top dollar i have a friend that moved from new york to virginia and prices in New York were so expensive. 
And she did not look at enough houses in Virginia. She just saw the Virginia prices and thought this is a great deal. She actually paid too much for her house in hindsight. She realized it now because she didn't realize that the Virginia market was a whole different market than the New York market. So just make sure you know where you're buying, what the neighborhood's like, will the house hold its value? Um, do your research. Don't just buy, uh, you know, they say that a person looks at four houses before they buy. With our first house, we looked at 40 houses because our budget was so tight. We had, we really needed a miracle we is what we up, needed. We ended up buying a house that was a repo from a bank and the financing was two percentage points below right. what was normal. They didn't charge us any closing costs right. or fees. It was a really good deal. But so that took, is, that, hold on, that is one way to find a house that you can pay cash for. Right. Look for a repo and just realize you're going to have to do some work to it. Another or hire the work. Hold on. The reason it took us 40 is because we were starting out looking in one area of town and then decided, no, we didn't want to really buy a house in that area of town. So then we moved to a different area of town to, to find one. With this house, we looked at 20 houses. And when we walked into this house, we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was the one we wanted. Right. So, so small, buy small, do your research, look for unusual options like going door to door in a neighborhood that you're interested in and knocking on the door and saying, are you willing to sell your house? And you may find somebody who you can do the deal without a realtor, but possibly use a lawyer if your city requires it, state requires it, or use a title company to do the paperwork. You can save a lot of money that way. But paying cash for a house is a great thing. The only thing we caution you about is don't go so far to the extreme that you buy a house that you haven't fully checked out just because it's cheap. We uh, were speaking in, in North, Dakota. North Dakota to a couple, and mm -hmm. they did that. They bought the house. They bought a house because they wanted to be debt-free. They were a young couple, but they got taken, and they ended up... The roof ended up caving in on the house, and they were faced with a thirty or $40,000 bill to repair the house because it had caved in under the snow because they hadn't had an inspection, and it wasn't built to code. So just know right. that you, you've got to be careful. Right. Do your research. Have a home inspection. Pay yes. That. Don't cut corners there. The other way to build a house for cash or to buy a house for cash is to buy something small that you build onto as you as you have the money. And but if you have the money, they don't have to buy small. If they have the you're, cash for a house, you're right. they just you just need to research it. You don't necessarily need to buy small. Okay. You need to research. So I'm going to go back here and we'll read right. a few more questions. The brownies. Let's look at a few more. Questions, but the brownies are just about ready to come out. So I'm gonna... um, do the recipes come with the menu? The recipe is on the website for the brownies. Yes. Um, no, no, but it doesn't come with the menu in the scriber only section. Oh, the recipes. Oh, yes. But mo a lot of the recipes there are actually on our website. Yes, they are. And I'm putting up more like I, I'm trying to put up one recipe every week or two. So eventually we'll come out with a cookbook. We just don't have that now or yet. Okay, now we have a question from Laura Ford. Okay. And we're going to introduce people to Laura next week. But she, Laura says, um, doesn't shredded cheese clump together when frozen? And, and the answer is? Um, it can. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But it's very, very easy to break apart mm -hmm. and use. Oh. So talk a little bit about next week's show okay so next week's show we are going to do a collab collaborative with laura ford she has a website called life of the differently abled and laura has a disability called cerebral palsy and so we're going to talk to laura's friends about um being thrifty and frugal and kind of field questions by laura about living on a lower income and um Laura can answer your questions about living with disability. Um, if you have a child or with disability, able. right? And um, and any questions you might have in that respect. So we're gonna field it. Um, we're gonna be doing a you know obviously a half hour show or maybe a 40, 45 minute show next week. And we are really looking forward to having Laura on our show and talking with you all. Okay, so here are the brownies. Oh my gosh, they look so good. They smell even better. I'm going to bring you guys closer so you can smell them. Where'd my knife go? Come on over here. Come on over here. Come on a little closer. Uh, closer. Look at those. Oh my gosh. That's as far as I can. Wait, I can disconnect this cable. We can go even further. 
Look at those. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. They are just falling apart. They're almost, oh. they're almost too uh, too hot to eat, but we've got to eat one, and we've got to burn. No, the, I don't know if we can eat it. We've got to burn the roots oh of our mouth. Oh my gosh! You how exciting! You're gonna burn the you roots of your mouth. You can't eat brownies eat for yourself. Burn the roof of your mouth. Okay, here All we right. go. Here we go. I'm gonna get a fork because I'll be able to cool it off a little bit. Here we go. I'm ready. Oh my oh, gosh. They smell, they smell like liquid hot chocolate. Oh my I mean, gosh. Solid hot chocolate. They smell like. They will set up as they cool, but oh, right oh, now, oh, go oh, ahead, oh, stand oh. in front of the camera, burn oh, your mouth. Here we go. I'm going to burn my mouth. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> look at, look at you how, better blow it, seriously. Look at how gooey that is. Can you see that? I don't know. I'm going to step over here so I can see what you guys are seeing. Make sure <laughs> You're going to drop yeah. It's going to fall right on there, the floor. Look at how gooey that is. Oh, <laughs> And you can even see the the, the nutness of it. Okay. Are you blowing it? Touch it to your lips. Oh. oh. <laughs> You're a crazy guy. Mm. Okay. Oh, it's warm. Uh huh. And then the crunchiness of the nut. Uh huh. Mm. And the chocolateiness. <laughs> mm. Okay. Here. You gonna share a piece with me? Yeah. Did you burn the roof of your mouth? No. Oh. Okay, guys, you got to make your own recipe, but you got all the tools to do it now. Oh my goodness! Oh. Um, this this tray pan won't make it till tomorrow. Yes, it has to. No. Okay. So. All right. It was great spending time with you tonight. We will see you next Friday night with our friend Laura Ford, and we're just very excited about what's happening these days. So have a good night. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notifications. Yes. And make sure you leave a comment so that you, you can, can be deal. in the drawing. Okay. We love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.